We're here today at Nicholasville Reloading Supplies and Guns, and I'm here to learn about something I've wanted to know about for a long time, and that's reloading. I'm here with Randy Bickley, and Randy, you've been reloading for a long, long time. Yes, sir. Here at the store, we get customers on a daily basis that come in. What are the basic fundamentals to reloading? What's the bare minimum amount of equipment that I would need? How expensive is it to get into? Tell me a couple reasons why someone would want to get into reloading. Cost is probably what most people think of first and foremost. You take an oddball caliber, like we're going to demonstrate today, a 325 Winchester Short Magnum. It's relatively new cartridge, 15, 18 years old, but it's extremely hard to find the ammunition. One box of 20 rounds is typically around $80, $85 after tax. If you have to mail order it, then you have freight in included in that. So you can easily get up in the $100 per 20 rounds. Not only cost, you have a lot of people that are trying to squeeze as much accuracy out of the gun as they possibly can. Custom reloading saves money, but actually can increase your gun's accuracy as much as 60% in mm -hmm. cases. Another reason is out of date or antiquated. A lot of calibers out there, you physically can't buy components for. You have to hard cast your own lead. You have to research different powder charges. And another reason is personal satisfaction or gratification to know that you physically built that load. Think of it like a shotgun. Our grandfathers had one break open shotgun. Mm -hmm. That was their meat provider. They hunted 90% of their game with that one shotgun. Mm -hmm but they change projectiles, they change shot loads, mm -hmm. they change shot length, shot sizes, different grains of powder. They often reloaded. I see you've got a couple of components here to help build a rifle round. Tell me all the individual pieces of a manufactured factory round. So what you've picked up is a factory Winchester Super X round. As you can see right here, these are loaded charges that have never been fired. These are the once fired cases that came from those, the byproduct that we want to salvage. The case is approximately 45 to 50% of reloading cost. Ooh. So if you have the case, in this case for a gun that's rare, you're saving 45 to 50% of the cost right off the bat. Wow. This brass has been washed. It has not been processed. We're going to actually do that step today. This is actually finished loaded ammunition that's from the same brass that that was. So we're taking this bullet, we're firing it, creating this brass. We're going to inspect and wash this brass. We're going to clean it. We're going to resize and deprime it. Then we will trim it. We will chamfer and bevel, remove the burr from the flash hider. We'll use a particular powder charge and type and weight with a particular projectile. We'll come back to this machine and actually seat the bullet in and we'll measure it to make sure it's the correct overall length. That's all it takes. There's four main components, the brass, the primer, the powder, and the projectile. Now this is a very quick overview of reloading. By no means by watching this segment are you going to be proficient in it reloading. There's a lot of information. You've read a lot of manuals. You've done this for many, many years. This is kind of just a basic overview of what reloading is, right? This is as quick and down and dirty as I can be in a very short <laughs> period of time. Yeah. So if you think that's something you may want to get into, the first step would be when you're out shooting, pick save your, your brass. Save your brass. You said this is 40% of your cost? It can be. With pistols, not so much so, but rifles it is. We're going to do this demonstration today with one particular rifle caliber only. So we're going to refer to our reloading manual. The reloading manual is going to show you all the processes of what happens when the bullet ignites. We'll talk about equipment. You have to have a set of dies. There are no fewer than six different manufacturers of dies. There are differences in price and there are differences in quality. This set of dies is a brand new set of dies. There is a collet mm -hmm. shell holder that has to go in each individual round. And the label on the box physically will tell you it's a full length die set for the 325 WSM and it uses a shell holder number 43. Mm -hmm. 
This is a shell holder 43, and this is the actual sizing die. Okay. You can buy used equipment online, average normally $100 to $150 for a press. Mm -hmm. You have presses that are called turret presses that have a top tool head holder, if you will, a turret. You can put multiple dies around that turret, put one shell in, and every time you pull the handle, you'll rotate the turret and then do the next step. Gotcha. Rotate the head and do the next step. So if, if you were gonna load like multiple rounds, like you wanted to load a thousand, two thousand rounds, you might want to turn. Even but... if you want to do, as I'd have done, if you want to do 40 rounds, you're going to inspect your brass, mm -hmm. you're going to wash your brass, you're going to re-inspect the brass because the dirt and the powder fouling may very well be hiding a superficial crack that you mm -hmm. didn't see. You just mm -hmm. thought it was a dirt smudge. Mm -hmm. You're gonna re-inspect it. You're going to inspect every step of the process. If you're reloading to be in a hurry, you need to find another hobby because this is not something you wanna take lightly. Mm -hmm. This is something you really wanna do safely and efficiently, and you have to go buy the book. Okay. All right, at this time, we're going to get the table cleared off and we're going to get set up so that we can actually start doing some reloading. Now we're set up to actually reload. And this is reloading once the brass has already been cleaned. Mm -hmm. We've already inspected these 10 rounds. Anytime you use a sizing die, whether it be to D prime or size, you have to use lubricant or you will wind up getting your brass stuck in the die. So I've already placed these 10 rounds in my individual loading block at roughly a 45 degree angle. I'm gonna make two passes so that the overspray physically goes down in the chamber and as well as the top. We want the overspray pattern to capture as much as we can. It's going to creep around the brass. Okay. From there, we already have the press set and it is adjusted so we have zero lash in the take up of the handle. We're going to push down until it bottoms out, pull it back up. Now what that actually did, I deprimed it and now I fully resized it, and as I come back up, I have to go back against the expander ball, which takes it back again. So now this brass, the primer has been removed. Mm -hmm. It's been fully resized. So now what we need to do is we have sized them, and we need to double check what our case length is. Right now our case length is 2.105. Our book tells us that our trim length is 2.090, so we're going to trim that excess length back off. This is a case trimmer, and I'm going to turn the mandrel until it doesn't go anymore. Now, there are serrations on this, just like a dial caliper, telling me how many thousandths I've got to adjust this. So now that we've trimmed it, we're at 2.090. Oh, yeah. And as you see, the burr forming, that's mm -hmm. how much metal it's actually trimming. All right, so now we have these eight rounds. Now that we've done that, we need to chamfer and bell. All it's gonna take is just a couple of turns because you have three cutting faces. That particular edge trims the outside, which is the bevel. This put a chamfer on the inside. The inside chamfer helps the bullet feed into the brass without distorting or scratching removing material from the diameter of the projectile itself. The next step that I'm going to do, we're gonna deburr the inside of the flash hole. The flash hole is the hole in the very center of that primer pocket area. You want that burr removed. Now, that's how much material I just removed that was sticking inside that hole. Sometimes you have to put a glove on to help hold the brass. All right, so now that we've finished all of that, this is actually a beveler. I want to put a rounded edge to help funnel that primer in there, and that's what that does. Not all brass is going to require this step. Your case inspection will determine whether that needs to be done or not. So from here, we've finished the case preparation. 
We are technically now ready to come back to the reloading press and the powder measure and powder scales, and now we're ready to load these final rounds. All right. So now we're set up back over here at the actual reloading press. So we've inserted our primers in the primer tube. They're ready. We've removed our sizing die. We'll insert one case in the case feeder. We're going to actually pull back on the primer lever, which loaded a primer in the cup, lower the handle, push the cup forward, and push forward. With that, you can see the new primer is actually just a little bit below flush. It's pushed down in. You can see the radius edge that we trimmed. Yeah, that looks great. And I never touched a primer. You don't want the oils from your skin to contact the powder or the primer. I actually put my powder in and I adjust the screw up or down to insert the amount of powder that I need. We're loading 65 grains. I want my tenth to be on zero. In this case, it needs possibly one kernel. It is dead even on zero. That is exactly 65 grains. I'm going to hold the powder foam, and I'm gonna slowly pour that in, tap it for just a second, make sure it all fell down, and repeat the process. Okay. Now that I've dumped the powder in, I'm gonna take a flashlight, and I'm just gonna secondary check. Again, you can't check too often. I want to look inside each one to measure to make sure there's powder in there. I don't want to take the chance of missing one. So these are the projectiles that we're using. These are Barnes TSXs, and they're actually going to seat that far down inside mm -hmm. the brass because we're loading it to the SAMI overall length recommended. We're not loading specifically to your gun, but as you can see where the powder line would be, that bullet is sticking down into that powder. Yeah. So that powder is actually going to come on up into wow. the case neck. So now we're ready to actually seat the projectile. We're going to insert it into the case mouth, hold it centered till it enters into the machine, and we're just going to fully close the press and bring our handle back up. Now I've already taken the advantage of setting this assembly so that it's the right length. Our calipers are right now set on a true zero. We are not crimping at all, and our case length is 2.860 on the money. You are completely loaded, my friend. Well, what I absolutely love about this process, one, it was a lot of fun, it's very educational, and now I have a premium round that you've taught me how to duplicate when I need more. It was a very quick and brief session, and look forward to helping you further you along as you continue to do this in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you.